Good morning and uh, welcome here this morning uh, and I have just realised that I have put the wrong date. Uh, as soon as I press the button uh, I, I realised that I put the wrong date on the um, uh, on the title of this. It is not Friday the 26th. Um, Friday the 26th does not exist this year. Uh, I do believe it is Friday the 29th. I looked at my watch just as I pressed start to realise my error. So I do apologise uh, for, um, for that. Um, it, it seems as though uh, I am very much, um, uh, I, I am very much one um, who lives in the past, quite possibly whether that's putting the wrong date on the order of service for a Sunday or putting a date that doesn't exist now. However, good morning. Uh, it's a, ooh, I thought I saw a bit of blue sky there. I think it was slightly less gray than, than other bits, but it's a great pleasure to welcome you here this morning for morning prayer. I hope this finds you well, in good spirits and in good heart. I'll make sure my phone is on silent. Um, as per usual, I am expecting a text from Jacob in a minute, which I will uh, respond to uh, when I get it. But he's still cycling to school. He's cycling to school all the time there. Uh, whether it's tipping down with rain or whether it's uh, ice um, or sunshine, he uh, will travel in order is really good. Uh, just a reminder that um, uh, today we have morning prayer, tomorrow we have morning prayer and then uh, on Sunday we uh, have our all together service at 10 o'clock which we're currently uh, putting together, currently gathering bits and bobs. Thank you to all those that contributed already uh, and to all those that will contribute over the next few days or next day or so and to, to put things together. So that's 10 o'clock on Sunday. Uh, again, if you are on the list of, um, uh, if you're on the list for the newsletter, for the for the news sheet, pew sheet, notices, whatever you might call them, then uh, you will be a you you should you should get a link to the to the kind of time for coffee and chat before the service on Sunday. So let's have a moment as we recognise God's presence with us today. We give thanks for the fact that we are here together. Uh, as George would say, bless the fact that we've woken up and we bring the day before God. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Your light springs up for the righteous, and all the peoples have seen your glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God, King of the nations. To you be praise and glory forever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. As the sun of righteousness dawns in our hearts, anoint our lips with the seal of your spirit, that we may witness to your gospel and sing your praises in all the earth. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. I'll be joyful in the Lord all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. For the Lord is gracious. His steadfast love is everlasting 
and his faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. got a text and it's going to respond. Going to use Psalm 65. Thank you for your patience. Going to use Psalm 65. Be joyful in God, all the earth. Praise is due to you, O God in Zion. To you the answer prayer shall vows be paid. To you shall all flesh come to confess their sins. When our misdeeds prevail against us, you will purge them away. Happy are they whom you choose, and draw to your courts to dwell there. We shall be satisfied with the blessings of your house, even of your holy te- even of your holy temple. With wonders, oh, excuse me. Oh, come on there. <laughs> with wonders, you will answer us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation. O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. In your strength you set fast the mountains and are girded about with might. You still the raging of the seas, the roaring of the waves and the clamour of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth tremble at your marvels. The gates of the morning and evening sing your praise. You visit the earth and water it. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare grain for your people, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges. You soften the ground with showers and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the pastures of the wilderness flow with goodness and the hills be girded with joy. May the meadows be clothed with flocks of sheep and the valleys stand so thick with corn that they shall laugh and sing. Be joyful in God, all the earth. May the riches, richness of your creation, Lord, and the mystery of your providence lead us to that heavenly city where all peoples will bring their wealth, forsake their sins, and find their true joy. Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. to just uh, smile a little bit where it says you drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges you soften the ground with showers and bless its increase so today the ground is well and truly being softened it's well and truly being blessed 
if you wish to read the Old Testament reading, and it continues to be from Hosea chapter 6, but uh, today from verse 7, right through to chapter 7, verse 2. Hosea 6, verse 7, through to chapter 7, verse 2. We're going to move on to a song of the New Jerusalem. Above you, the Holy One arises, and above you, God's glory appears. Arise, shine out, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord is rising upon you. Though night still covers the earth, and darkness the peoples. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. The nations will come to your light, and kings to your dawning brightness. Your gates will lie open continually, shut neither by day nor by night. The sound of violence shall be heard no longer in your land or ruin and devastation within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. No more will the sun give you daylight nor moonlight to shine upon you, but the Lord will be your everlasting light, your everlasting daylight. Your God will be your splendor. For you shall be called the city of God, the dwelling of the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Above you the Holy One arises, and above you God's glory appears. haven't had a chance uh, yet to read this Bible reading before we start. But we're going to jump in with two feet as we read 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 17 to the end. Let's see what challenges we may have today. Now in the following instructions I do not commend you because when you come together is not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you came together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have to be faction there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper, for when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and another becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I commend you? In this matter I do not commend you. For I have received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night that he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill, and some have died. But if we, judge our, if we judged ourselves, 
we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. If you are hungry, eat at home, so that when you come together, it will not be for your condemnation. About the other things, I will give instructions when I come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A uh, bit more straightforward. Slight uh, uh, mopping of brown. Um, straightforward, but still kind of quite heavy. Um, I think at that time, the church in Corinth, it would be a real mixture of people. There will be those there, as is the church today, there will be those there who may well have been more affluent and those that might have been struggling more. And quite literally, when they came together to break bread and drink wine, uh, some might take more than their share, whilst others would go hungry. And that wasn't right. That's a kind of sacrilege, really, to treat it like that. That's not really what it's about. And even if it wasn't this kind of holiness of me, holy, holiest of meals, then the sheer fact that people come a church coming together to eat and to share, if some go hungry and some um, get drunk, um, that wouldn't be right. So it's about that integrity again, that integrity of of sharing, of loving God and loving one another. And it seems that they were not doing that through, again, this most holiest of sacraments. And Paul lays it on the line. You know, if you don't do this in the right way, um, if you don't do this in the right way, you are going against, you know, you're going against the body and blood of the Lord Jesus. That's, I think that's kind of as simple as you can get, really. And it's why we have this liturgy. It's why we come, we, we prepare ourselves for the sacrament of communion, that we prepare ourselves. And I quite admire the, the um, integrity of folk who, who sometimes just say, well, do you know, I don't feel I'm in the right place at this time. Um, this morning or this evening or whatever it might be um, I would love to receive a blessing um, but they don't feel comfortable about taking communion there's an integrity there that's why we have the peace we need to be at peace with one another it isn't just a jolly it's not just the case of walking around and signing or, or, or saying things it is about being at peace being at one with God and at one with another. Thank you, Paul, for that. It's one of those times yesterday when we say this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's, it's kind of, um, uh, you think, oh, um, what to make of it. But today um, we thank Paul for that teaching and that correction. And again, he, he, he lays it down, but he says, So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. One another. He, he tells them what to do. Praise God. And of course, we pray for that day when we can break bread and share the cup of wine together again uh, in, its, in all its fullness when we can shake one another's hands, when we can, we can you know, offer each other uh, peace in, in, in body and in soul. It's the day that we pray for. Come to our responses. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Tell it out among the nations that the Lord is King. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. 
tell out his salvation from day to day. Let the whole earth tremble before him. Declare his glory among the nations and his wonders among all peoples. O worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth tremble before him. I'm going to click on the little uh, click, not clicking, I'm pressing. We say click, um, where it says a song of the blessed. If you have a red book, it's on page 606. But if you're on the app, on the website, you should come up with these um, uh, blessed, uh, the Song of the Blessed from Matthew, from the Sermon of the Mount, uh, Beatitudes. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Rejoice and be glad, for you are the light of the world, and great is your reward in heaven. We continue our intercessions. We continue to lift our prayers to God. A God who we know listens. A God who we know Excuse me, who we know responds. God may not respond in the way that we expect. Indeed, God may not respond in the way that we wish. But God responds. God promises to walk with us wherever we go. some prayers. And I'm um, using some of the prayers for use during the coronavirus outbreak. Um, some of these devices. let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. In this time of uncertainty and distress, of sadness and tragedy, sustain and support the anxious and the fearful. Lift up all who are brought low. Give energy to all the exhausted. That we may all rejoice in your comfort, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do indeed, Lord, raise your world today. We ask, dear Father, that your presence may be felt in those places where people are most in need, where folk are isolated and alone, where folk do not know what the day holds. Where folk might not be grateful or feel blessed that they may have woken up this morning because they are so low. We pray for them this day. We pray, dear Father, that you may show us where we may shine your light, where we may be your presence in this world. So Lord Jesus Christ, you taught us to love our neighbour. You taught us to care for those in need, to be a blessing to the world, as if we were caring for you. At this time, give us strength to comfort the fearful, to tend the sick, to assure the isolated, offer hope to those in despair and show others and make others aware of our love and more importantly your love for your name's sake. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. Merciful God we entrust into your tender care all of those who are suffering in body, mind or spirit, those who are ill or in pain, those who are anxious, those who are scared. In a moment of quiet, we lift those to you, Lord, whom are particularly on our hearts at this time. We name just some of them, Dorinda, Anna, Trudy, Jackie, Maureen, Peg, Judith, Julie, Lizzie, Mark, Dennis, Archie. Christine, Abby, William, Pauline, Linda, Roy, Stuart,
Stuart, Beryl, Hughes, George, Bob, Mary, Beck, John, Mary, Brian, and Mary. And their anxiety be their hope, and their darkness be their light, and their loneliness be their consolation, and their suffering be their comfort, through him who suffered alone on the cross, but reigns with you in glory, Jesus Christ our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, protection, energy and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, to all who are looking after those who care for the sick, to all those who enable this work to go on, making deliveries, cleaning our hospitals, coordinating things administrating things, those volunteers that are enabling the vaccination and test centres to be functioning. We thank you for those who have been searching for vaccines and treatments and we pray for their continued wisdom as they continue to adapt and look for the next potential issues that might arise. We give you thanks for their skills and understanding. We give you thanks for their service, for all those working uh, within our clinics and hospitals, in the logistics, in the surgeries, vaccination centres and hubs, test centres, laboratories. We thank you for their dedication. Strengthen them with your spirit, that through their work, many will be restored to health. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. do pray for those who have lost loved ones at this time, whether it's due to Covid or other situations. We pray, dear Father, that they will know the hope you have set before us all, of a place with you where there is no more tear, tears, no more pain and no more suffering. as they shed tears themselves, as they live with the pain of bereavement and grief. We commend their loved ones into your loving care. And we pray that they will see that light you have set before us and hold on to that light and fix their eyes upon that light, even if for just a fine sliver through the dark clouds. Help them to remember, help us to remember the promises you have set before us all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, dear Father, for all those that serve our communities, for all of those who, on whom we depend for our daily needs, for all of those, dear Father, whom, um, whom we owe so much, for 
all of those who are going out to work today. We give you thanks for what they continue to do. And we pray for their protection. And we pray uh, for yeah, their well-being. We give you thanks for all that they do. Help us to be thankful, gracious, uh, grateful people. We lift before you teachers at this time, especially towards the end of this week as they are drawing to the end of another week, as they might even be looking towards the end of term. And we pray for their protection. We pray that they will have uh, a positive weekend um, with families and a chance to recharge their batteries. So we lift before you Noel and Lisa, Nick, Gareth, Susan and Sue, Joshua, Chris, Rebecca, Asher, Matthew and Sarah, Heather and Marie. Be with them and all staff of our schools. We pray, dear Father, that wherever they are, if they are in school, as many are, or whether they're working from home, we thank you for their dedication and we pray for wisdom, for their wisdom and understanding. We also lift before you, Lord, our young people, and we pray for them, the ones we're going to name in a moment, and those who are on our hearts, many others that will be on our hearts, whom uh, are going through a really difficult time, as we all are, but they are in very formative and developmental years. We pray for them that this will be a time, this will be a time of, um, sorry, cat, just get involved. That this will be a time where they will develop resilience and uh, that they will develop resilience and character and come out of this stronger and where possible, even more well-rounded people due to the challenges that they faced and overcome. So we pray for Mia, Jack, Charlie, Evie, Noah, Ruby, Nathan, Travis, Ellie, Phoebe, Callum, Kerry, Anton, Oscar, Jake, Hannah, Jacob, Lily, Emily, Grace, Joel, and Talitha. May they feel your presence, know your wisdom and your understanding, and grow to be uh, women and men of you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I'm going to conclude with uh, this prayer for the Christian community, written by Barbara Glasson, um, from the Met uh, president of the Methodist Conference. We've used this uh, since these, these prayers have been released. We are not people of fear, we are people of courage. We are not people who protect our own safety. We are people who protect our neighbour's safety. We are not people of greed. We are people of generosity. We are your people, God, giving and loving. Wherever we are, whatever it costs, for as long as it takes, wherever you call us. Amen. And Colette for today. Almighty God, whose Son revealed in signs and miracles the wonders of your saving presence, renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness sustain us by your mighty power, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 
believing the promises of God as God as our Saviour has taught us. So we pray in whichever version or um, language translation that you wish. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. May Christ, who sends us to the nations, give us the power of his Spirit. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, she has to make an entrance. I don't know if you heard her meowing at the door. Uh, Lily let her in halfway through the intercession. Um, I think when, she, when I sit down on this seat, I sat down here earlier to get a couple of things ready. Uh, and when I sit down on this seat, she wakes up and moves here. I think she knows what's going on. Uh, she's joining in with meetings at the moment. Uh, she just... Uh, I think she just loves the limelight. So whether it's a, a meeting about adult education in Swindon or whether it's uh, a service, then uh, she wants to join in. She's not quite such a, a, a fan of Compline. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I would say it's her playtime. She, she might be outside at that point. Yeah, they can see you. They can see you, Kat. Yeah, you're okay. I hope you have a great day ahead. Um, I hope you feel God's blessings this day. Uh, it seems to have stopped raining at the moment, which is, uh, I, I think it's good news, but of course, uh, no, the ground is not going to be softened uh, any further and perhaps not going to be blessed. Although I think it's been softened and blessed quite a bit today and over these last few weeks. Have a great day. Uh, I look forward to being together again very soon. So may the Lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us. Help us to be a blessing to each other and our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the people praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Amen. 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 Have a great day. See you soon. You say that before I bring you cat? Yeah, you do.